Hello, everyone, and welcome to the, I believe this is the fourth episode of uh, Game Session. Um, I'm your host, Jose, or Seth Rokage. I'm joined here by the ever-enthusiastic Sarah. Oh, can I not hear you guys? Uh, Uh-oh. Nope. Hello. Oh, Sarah. <laughs> uh, hello. Okay, there we go. We, we're good. I was, I was like, oh hello? no, did I break the computer machine? I need my grandson to come help me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, we're joined by the ever enthusiastic Sarah. We're joined by the ever charming Corey. Hello. And the ghost of Mesa lives on. Uh, it's not just the camera. Mesa is is full on Ooh. ghost now, but we still love him very, very much. <laughs> So it's going to be a trio cast today. And so just at the top of the show, I want to remind everyone to like, follow, comment, subscribe, whatever on all the socials. That includes YouTube, Face. No, we don't have Facebook. No, we don't. <laughs> YouTube, we don't like Twi- them. Because <laughs> no. we're too cool. Uh, YouTube, Twitter, and you're obviously here on Twitch. It's free to make an account on all those. You can stay up to date with us, particularly on Twitter. Links are below and our ads are on screen. Um, so today we're going to be primary, primarily focused strictly on news because we're playing catch up from the one week that we didn't, um, do a podcast. And then also last week, we just <laughs> didn't have enough time because we had so many other things to talk about. So before we go straight on into business, uh, how's everyone doing today? I'm doing great. I'm just a little tired. Obviously I'm all snug in my hedgehog blanket and I have my my nice hot tea right here today because it's rather cold now so Corey, are you a bicycle by any chance i don't even want to know what pun you're gonna say are you too tired <laughs> okay well i'm leaving all right bye. you can play murder together Corey. you can do this together sarah how are you doing today i'm doing all right just like Corey. I got my tea lost in a Dragon Age Inquisition again, so that's all I'm thinking about currently. <laughs> and I, I had a bit of an annoying work day, but I'm here making puns, so everything's all right with the universe now. Drinking Diet Pepsi, some water. But yeah, it, it's going to be a fun, fun day filled with puns. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I didn't sign and, up for uh, yeah. You're going to be a bloody mess by the end of this because Sarah's going to come hunt you down. <laughs> yeah, that that might be true. <laughs> All right. I'm so just, co- just going to come and say hi, Corey. I'm not going to do anything. Sure. Yeah, with a knife <laughs> multiple times. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> All right. So we got we got a decent amount of ground to cover today. We're going to try to stick very strictly to that two hour time limit because okay. last week we wound up doing like three and a half again. Please, mm. it's too long. <laughs> too long. Too long. Uh, So the first story we have up here is uh, Dave Bautista is being added to the Gears of War 5 campaign as a replacement skin and voice for Marcus Phoenix, who is not the main protagonist in 5, but he plays a very vital role. And that comes on the heels of... um, Sarah, you you might recall it more than me. Um, Dave, when there was news of a uh, Gears of War movie, he was kind of putting himself out there like, hey, I want to play this role. And he's kind of like perfect for it. So um, around the time it was after the movie started gaining traction, like after it started gaining a writer, uh, from what people have said on online, uh, there was kind of a campaign already going for him to play Marcus. And at the time, Batista didn't even know what Gears of War was until he saw the campaign going around and he Googled it and he watched scenes from it and he was legitimately knocking on like producers and like writer's doors and was like, cast me as Marcus Phoenix, please. So it kind of became like the fan casting that everyone wanted because the actor actually wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. And we don't know when that Gears of War movie is happening, but we're at least getting him playing Marcus as a what's the word as like a toggle on and off skin so when you start uh i believe it's when you start a new game plus story of gears 5 which they're adding with the new update come the series x launch you can choose to have uh the normal like the marcus that we all know replaced with just batista's head and his voice like he's re like he's retaping all of marcus's old dialogue which honestly is very cool and then it comes really on the heels of um, after they did the movie thing and that didn't necessarily um, come out what they had done. They had made him a playable character skin and uh, the Gears 5 multiplayer, which was nice. But he, but this is definitely like a step up. Yeah, like, this is fully him. Like he is like taping his lines over Zoom and like 
talking over, like basically voicing over. So it's just him, it's just him playing Marcus, which is the one thing that the fans have right right now, which is still very cool. And then just uh, one other small tidbit about it is that uh, mm-hmm. Rod Ferguson, the uh, studio head of the Coalition, who you know oversaw Gears Four and Five, who has now moved on to Blizzard in order to take the helm for Diablo Four. Uh, this was apparently the last project that he wanted to make sure was done before they actually before he actually left. So this is actually pretty important to him. So it's a nice little like, oh, thanks, Rod, for uh, pushing this cool thing through. Oh, one interesting thing is um. Mm-hmm. When Rod had left, he had gone on record saying that he wasn't going to leave till he knew that the team back at the Coalition had the, like, timeline for where Gears was going down and straight, which is actually really funny when you think about it, because he was the reason that Gears 1 actually survived and actually happened. So it was just very in- interesting for him to say, oh, I'm not leaving until I know that this team has it. And he left like about a year ago or maybe at the beginning of this year. I don't know. Like I can't remember the time period, but he Mm -hmm. left and he was like, Oh, this, this team has it. And we haven't heard anything past gears tactics. So yeah, the coalition's a fucking hell of a studio. So I'm, I'm more than confident that uh, gear six and any future games are going to be just as high of a quality. And I'm sure he left him, you know, just another incapable hands in terms of a new studio head. Well, whenever six is coming, because please, (laughs) Uh, let's see, Please, next story we got yeah. is um, Sekiro's getting a new free update to the base game, making it the Game of the Year edition. So previous owners of just the regular game are getting that update for free. It's just a name they'll be changing in whatever digital library you have. And um, it, it was kind of weird <laughs> because um, unlike all the other Souls games and even Bloodborne, Sekiro had not received any... Uh, DLC expansions, which is pretty weird because it, this was this would might have been like the most uh, critically revered and it even won Game of the Year at um, the Game Awards last year, which is actually pretty surprising. Which I still um, don't understand, but <laughs> I, I don't. I don't understand. I, I don't understand you. But anyway, um, it, so there's some new free additions coming with this update, including uh, new unlockable skins for your character, a player recording mode, which will show a ghost, pretty much akin to how other Souls games operated, where if you touch a blood stain, you'll see the ghost of a character kind of walking around, and then like, and then see illusions that killed them. I was surprised that wasn't even a thing. I didn't realize that wasn't a thing in Sekiro when I was playing it. I actually, I didn't even notice that it was missing from the game. Um, I think it's just because my brain registered it as like, oh, this is kind of like Dark Souls, but it's a totally different game. So it mm-hmm. might be, it might have things that Dark Souls doesn't have and vice versa. So it's it's good that they're adding that because some people need a need a little bit of a hint, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. The, the uh, hints could be pretty, pretty funny. There, there's even people that like steer you into like disaster for like falling boulders or jumping off a cliff or anything. But I didn't notice their absence too much in Sekiro. Mm-hmm. It wasn't well, I mean, like big... I'm, I'm not a souls person, but I have always seen that the whole like ghost showing like other people doing like whatever they were doing, always more of a souls thing, like a demon souls or like a, or like a, well, it was so in like Bloodborne the, as well. Yeah, Demon Souls, mm-hmm. Bloodborne, Dark Souls, like a Souls, like I, like I always imagine it's like a Souls thing, and like Sekiro seemed to be like, yeah, it was close to Souls, but it seemed to be its own thing. I can understand him not not putting it in there at like uh, up until now because they wanted it to be its own thing and like separate it from the. Yeah, it's just another the, way like, for it. Old stuff. It's just another way for it to like kind of separate itself, so like make its own little brand. And, um, yeah, yeah, ex- ex- exactly. Like, cause it's like, yeah, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Bloodborne had it, and the times that I played those games, like the short amount of time that I that I played those games, those actually helped me. So I found it cool to have those in there. But with Sekiro, I've never played Sekiro, but from what I've heard from people who who have played it, just it didn't seem like to me that Sekiro needed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it seemed to be good on its own without like oh needing to see what other people did when the game's whole focus is like what what you're doing like how are you going towards this boss how are you well it's just well there's no (laughs) pvp in uh sekiro either which i'm fine with because i fucking hate pvp in the souls games i think anyone that wants to challenge me while i'm already having like a tough ass time trying to beat this game and you come along trying to swipe me i'm like come on dude where's the come where's the camaraderie in this right and she has a point in saying um in saying that because it's like uh 
because like Sekiro, Sekiro actually has a pretty straightforward story, as far as I as far as I recall. Um, it's 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 it, the story wise, it's nothing it's nothing as abstract as Bloodborne and Dark Souls was. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it's like you're this guardian and you're going you're you're going to try and save the per the you know the child that you were guarding this whole time from this you know evil powerful person you know it, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward and cut and dry like you're the you're the hero he's the villain mm-hmm. you know kind of thing and uh, the most substantial thing to come out of uh this update which i'm actually really looking forward to is they're giving you the giving you the option to rematch with bosses that you've already defeated so it's not exactly like a separate mode where you're just like oh let's do a boss rush but um those are the bosses are definitely the highlight of the game so if you just want to grind out on them you can't like get experience but you know it's just the highlight they're fun to fight so i i'm I'm currently replaying it now, but I might hold off. Just wait for the update so I can fight some of them again. For sure. I might give it another try because I actually never beat it. Um, so I might give it another shot and just start fresh, you know? Mm-hmm. And in the hottest of gamer take news to uh, this week was uh, Stadia creative director Alex Hutchinson, who had previously worked on games such as Far Cry 4 and Assassin's Creed 3. Um does a really good job of not shoving just his foot in his mouth, but basically his entire fucking leg. <laughs> uh, and uh, just like I saw also, your, uh, I saw your posts on that. Yeah, and just also, like in a co- uh, just a heads up, Twitter reminded me of this. He's the one that said that female characters are harder to. That was it. That was a different Alex. To be fair, oh, it was yeah. Damn it! I I thought that was him. I was like, ah, yes, did you? That guy's a jackass too. The other all corp- of the Alexes are jackass. <laughs> the other corporate Ubisoft so Alex Ubisoft person. Alex. But yeah, um, so just in a completely unprompted tweet, <laughs> and you you would just imagine people like in very high positions, like in a corporate structure, like Ubisoft. You'd be like, maybe just stick to just saying nice things on Twitter. Don't come out with hot takes. You you only have something to lose, nothing to gain. But like the thing is about that though, Jose, is that I think people, I think people do that because in the day in the day and age that we live in, uh, if you have a hot take about something and you know for a fact that a, a good amount of people are going to disagree with you, and but on the other side, a lot of people are going to agree with you. It cr- regardless, it creates engagement. It it creates uh, traffic um to whatever outlets that you're you know producing content to it 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 does its job it does it does the job that it's supposed to do oh that's absolutely and, true because now it has oh, people it, with stadia in their mouth but to but to his credit Corey, I, he's brought I, I more t- to with you but reading these tweets did you really want to go use stadia after this he's no. he's no. brought more attention to stadia than stadia <laughs> ever got by itself so that's something <laughs> it's was, like that saying it's like that saying that um it, uh, what's it called? Um, bad publicity is still good publicity. Yeah, bad publicity is still good publicity. Exactly. So it's like, eh, I mean, maybe it was a maybe it maybe it was him putting his foot in his mouth, but maybe it was something that was calculated and uh, meant to create more engagement for Stadia because they know that they're they're circling the drain before they even made it out of the toilet. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> go, going to what he's actually said. Uh, in a tweet, Alex stated that he believes that streamers should either pay licenses or um, or after the fact royalties for the games that they stream, <laughs> which just completely ignores the fact that streaming is free promotion. And, and just even in terms of the law, it has been so mm-hmm. undisputed for what feels like 10 plus years at this time that trying to make a case against it now won't work because no one has, has done anything to stop it beforehand. There, there's already precedent. But you look at a game like Among Us, and, and that game came out two years ago. It just blew up out of nowhere specifically because of streaming. And th- now the developers are just rolling around in cash. They don't even know what to do. They canceled their sequel because they said, oh, well, let's just provide content for the people that bought this game. They're buying um, uh, in-game items and whatnot. It's just completely... Like I understand the corporate point of view. Just like, oh, this is our product, and you should be paying in order to use our product in a transformative way but that exists in like every single medium 
And it, it, it's just it's just shooting yourself in the foot. This is free promotional content. It is in an indisputable fact that it is a net benefit to any game sales to have people streaming and promoting right. material. And and I like I I totally I totally understand that. And and um, it, I think it goes. It, it needs to be said that um, a lot of people see. This is the problem I see with with uh, just streaming straight games. Um, and it's the same reason I never really liked uh, the whole PlayStation Now service. Um, and that's that's the fact that, one, it's it's not even like you're not downloading anything to your system. So I don't feel like it really just depends on your internet service. And not everybody has a wonderful internet. So it's like, for some people, like I have a, I have a best oh, friend. Oh, oh, Corey, this is for streaming in regards to, you know, like Twitch streamers, like streaming... Um no i know but i was touching on i was touching on uh stadia as well okay and everything um but i was i was i was gonna because we're we're still talking about stadia right yes unfortunately i was like i I, unfortunately (laughs) but no i was just going back to stadia so basically like that's the problem with like streaming games to your console and everything that wouldn't work for people who have slower internet so like one of my really good friends i've known for a long time she doesn't have great internet and it takes like a day like a half a day if not more to download a game to her console so those people don't have that option and a lot of people just like owning their games they like flat out buying a game and owning it either physically or digitally um so i i just i don't know i don't want to even say that stadia is ahead of its time because i just don't think that people I think it is in the regard that that like let's say like 20 plus years from now that that's like the eventual future but like right now, like any amount of like latency, I that's just a nope for me. I, I, I have no interest. In yeah, it at this point. and that's that's what I see is like late the latency problems, you know. Mm-hmm. And I have you know, and I have a friend who's like basically a Stadia spokesperson at this point, and he's all about Stadia. Um, and he's like, oh, I have zero latency. I play in high definition 4K and everything. I'm like, that's great. What kind of internet do you have? Mm-hmm. Because that's I'm- what it comes down to. I know uh, Mesa had previously mentioned that he um, <laughs> he'd use on live back in the day because that's basically what he, what he had access to. Is it was a web browser, and that's a good way to get people in. That I mean, I would rather take a, a, a high latency game versus you know not playing whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's absolutely true for that at the very least. But uh, I think what doesn't help the situation is that uh, Alex Hutchinson, the guy that started this whole big old kerfuffle uh he did not take kindly to people very rightfully calling him out he went after um another alex alex navarro from giant bomb calling him a douchebag for making a joke out of the situation it's just like dude you're like a high up ubisoft person maybe you shouldn't be going after the press with like explicit things like you're a douchebag that, that's not, not a good look any, well and, and he was because he was talking about how stream how streamers should pay for the rights to play games to play the games on stream right Mm -hmm. like like how like i guess how people uh should pay to license certain songs and music you know to play during programs that's just ridiculous it's like it's like 100 percent. like most of the time these days um gaming games and 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 uh, gaming companies are getting like you said like your example said with among us like it blew up because of streaming like this is free advertisement for these gaming companies yeah it's and a for parasocial uh it's like a parasocial ecosystem it's, it's free promotion exactly so it's like why are you complaining like you're already getting paid like you're 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 already getting paid uh, for ev- for every game that people buy because people will watch a streamer and actually go and buy a game that they liked a streamer playing, you know, and then they'll go play it with their friends or something like that. And it, you know, so what's the problem? Mm-hmm. I it's can like, tell you for a, <laughs> I can tell you for a damn fact of like let's say Ubisoft games in the future they all require streamers to pay license license fees or royalties. Guess and what? No streamers- one's gonna pay that. Exactly, Sarah. No one's gonna want mm-hmm. to fucking touch those games. You're like. Now nah, we're good. We'll just play fucking fucking Activision games, whatever. Yeah, Fuck exactly. The pe- and- they will play they will play whatever is easily accessible and is for the most part free to stream. Mm-hmm. That's that's the 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 only thing that you are that they are going to be doing if the, if if companies start doing that is shooting themselves in the foot. It's th- it's 
<laughs> I think the funniest part of this whole situation is that it has a giant Dwight from the office vibes because on his Twitter and I guess even his LinkedIn, he has his position listed as Stadia creative director. You're like, oh, wow, that's like he's the creative director of Stadia. That's a pretty fucking high up spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, much like uh, Dwight's position is assistant to the regional manager, uh, Alex Hutchinson is a creative director at stu- at Stadia. So he's a creative director for a game studio that works for Stadia. He's not the Stadia creative uh, director. Okay, see, that's tricky wording. If, if I could do a Dwight impersonation, I'd probably read his tweets in that voice. That's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, yeah, that's somebody who wants to trick people into thinking he's more important than he actually is. Yeah. He left Ubisoft probably just, ju- just for the title because the title sounded cooler to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we didn't get a chance to touch upon this, uh, last week. Uh, so cyberpunk has officially gone gold, which means the game has been certified by the, uh, console manufacturer, Sony and Microsoft. And so just leading, even leading up to the release, they're still working on patches and whatnot. And uh, games journalist Jason Schreier, who was previously at Kotaku, currently at Bloomberg, had reported that CG Project Red had mandated six day work weeks up to release. And um, this caused a bit of a stir because, you know, obviously, I think everyone here can agree crunch sucks, mm-hmm. especially when it's unpaid. But in this situation, it's a little bit different because CG Project Red is a Polish company. Um, so the president, uh, I think I want to make sure I'm pronouncing this right. Badowski, Badowski, uh, said that, uh, CG project red employees can continue to count on bonus payouts amounting to 10% of the company's annual profit. So obviously, obviously something that America's shitty labor laws are not going to guarantee to, uh, American developers. And, uh, thanks to Polish labor laws, their, their hours are supposed to be capped at 48 hours a week and they get other additional benefits. So it's worth noting that yes, crunch sucks, but they do have these other benefits. Um, but even outside of that, you know, crunch is just like an ever present culture, like an expectation to be like, Hey, you're going to stay late today. Right. And if you're like, no, I have to go home. I have to see my family. You come in tomorrow, the next day, everyone's glaring at you because like, Hey, uh, I had to stay late doing something because you didn't want to stay late. It's, it's that fucking like uh, culture just like bearing down on you. That's telling you like you need to give up your life to work here. And I don't want to yeah. speak for for everyone here, but I've definitely gone through um, rough patches of crunch. Not not nowhere near it to the extent that many game developers go through, but it fucking it blows. It sucks, mm-hmm. especially when it's unpaid. If I get paid for it, that's an entirely different thing. But it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sarah, do you want to talk about the... Um, or I guess I'll lead into it a bit. Um, so Jason <laughs> Shry is usually very accurate with all his reportings. I don't want to disparage his reportings because it, it is accurate. But uh, he also made some shots at both um, gaming influencer Paris and, uh, and Game Informer for providing a little bit of nuance to the subject. I know it kind of peeved you off a bit if you want to go yeah. on Yeah. So just a heads up, I'm not biased on this, or I am biased. I don't like Jason. I think he's been too high up on his horse after moving to Bloomberg, which uh, is normally a white, uh, I can't say this word without fucking it up, a right wing news out- outlet. So just a heads up to that. Um, sorry, th- I had to get some teeth. Do you think the- they stop and frisk their employees? <laughs> <laughs> they send someone to your house. Who's stopping to frisk you? But um, no, no, that's terrible. I really don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, what if if I remember the situation correctly? What had happened was uh, um, this. I call him an influencer. There's some people who, are, but whatever. Uh, Paris came out and. Um, kind of called out Jason because Jason put out this article literally I think it was two days after uh, Cyberpunk went gold and he he almost put it out as like almost like a response to that and Paris brought up like oh you're making it hard for them for the employees to celebrate the fact that their game is finally done absolutely it's it's like all the hours and like time they spend away from their families like what what? I'm sorry Mm -hmm. go ahead 
No, like the fact when Jason released the article seemed timed as hell, as if he knew when the game was going to go gold and he wanted to drop this literally, I think it was date, like a two days after, like, like it was really close to like after CD Projekt Red had announced that, that the game went rogue, uh, rogue, heh, gold. So Paris called him out and he's like, look, it's not like, like I get you want to, I even think that Paris commended him on his, uh, re- 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 reporting to like Paris was like, look, you're a great journalist. You call out crunch when it's not good. And I completely agree, but it's not cool right now because these developers are cel- celebrating. It's kind they, of a thing where it's wanted. just like, can you at least like wait a day? Maybe. Yeah. And, um, what came after was some of the uh, hot take pettiest bullshit I have ever seen because what happened was Jason dug into Paris's Twitter account and not quote tweeted him, but screenshotted tweets of when Paris received um, like influencer. I don't want to exactly call them gifts, but swag from C project red because Paris mm-hmm. is a huge fan of theirs. He, he loves the Witcher. He's super excited for cyberpunk. So CD Projekt Red obviously sent him stuff. They sent him a, a gaming chair. They sent him like an influencer kit. And Paris has gone on record, I think even saying that like when the game com- comes out, he will critique it on stuff that's not good. He will like point out the stuff that's bad about it. Like he, he basically what he's saying is they're not paying him to say good things. He's, he is going to be honest. And mm-hmm. what did instead of quote tweeting these he screenshotted like literally did that iphone like click and like oh, screenshotted yeah. them, and then like uh what's the word like uh cropped, cropped to the images and was like oh at least i'm not receiving a gaming chair from them i don't i don't accept gaming swag because that makes me look biased and it was like this really really what's the word um just petty it's, it's just petty oh well, yeah such and, unnecessary drama. And it's like, Paris, sh- I will admit, Paris shouldn't have poked the bear. Because no one should poke Jason Schreier, because this shit happens. I, th- I think and just also- going back to what you said, it's just like, yeah, I, I love Jason's work and what he's doing. And obviously what he's doing, like putting um, a spotlight on crunch is important. But I think there's definitely a little bit of an ego issue going on. And just oh, like, 100%. Like, like, even after he tried, he, he blew up on Paris, he blocked him anyway. It's just like, maybe mm-hmm. you should have just done that to begin with. And, and I'm not like trying to say anything telling, but it's extremely interesting that he only called out Paris for receiving the chair. When other influencers like Alana Pierce of Inside Gaming, she received the same chair. She is, she is in the game. Yeah. And he only called out Paris. Uh, to her specific credits, because um, she has a podcast that she also, uh, one of her co-hosts is Troy Baker. So whenever it comes to stuff like that, where she has a conflict of interest, she just completely removes herself from the discussion. Like she won't even talk about it, won't review it, won't do preview coverage and whatnot. So credit to her for that. And it's, but it's just like, it was so extremely petty and... I wasn't a fan of Jason before this, and I'm still not a fan of him now. Well, even after the Paris stuff, um, there was a GameSpot uh, podcast with, um, I believe it was Liana Rupert, like just giving, like what we're doing here, giving a little bit of nuance to the situation. And Jason blew up on them again, saying like, oh, you're, you're saying like what I'm saying is not true about all these reports. And that's, and I listened to the entire podcast and And there was no yeah, they don't say that. So he's and just then, constantly so he, blown up on people. It's just annoying. And, and and supposedly him blowing up on that show sent death threats to her. His his followers went through and sent and sent death threats to her. See, that's not. I mean, I'm always hearing stuff like that, and that's not okay. Like guys, don't get involved in the drama online. Don't send death threats to people. Like that's not okay. And also, I, it's extremely telling that Trier did nothing about that when she posted about it. He did I think, I, nothing. I think, I think at one level, it should almost be assumed like most people would disavow that kind of activity. But still, like as someone with a platform, you should be coming out and saying, like, don't do this shit. If you do this shit, fuck you. Get the fuck out of my community. Mm-hmm. It's just it's and it's like, again, I'm again brought up what i did last week you can love something and be excited for something but still be able to point out the bad of it or point out what's not great about it 
And I will admit, I'm excited for Cyberpunk 2077. I have been for, like, a long time. I don't, like, even, like, yeah, Polish laws are different. And I think it's great that they're still getting paid. But you should never work, like, six days a week straight. Like, I did that once back in my GameStop days. I worked, like, five days in a row. And I legitimately was just dead, like, busted out crying in the middle of work. I'm like the fifth day yeah that happened to me too where i i uh i was working my butt off constantly and uh my my store was a high volume store and uh my my man my district manager's um word to me was um well are you using all 44 of your mandatory hours are you using your mandatory overtime and i literally was just silent over the phone i was just like shocked I was mm-hmm. like, oh, so, okay, so, so your, so your response is to not give me the needed help that I need on probably a daily basis because I'm a new manager and everything, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but to work harder. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> Un- unpaid overtime is bullshit. Uh, unions can help with that. But uh, just going back to the, I guess, kind of free swag aspect of it just because I want to open the topic a little, what are your thoughts on, let, let's say an influencer, YouTuber, whatever, if, does them getting swag from a company, does that taint their credibility in your mind? And I will, uh, no, because I don't know if that went through. Uh, no, and I'm going to actually, I mean, Corey and I aren't influencers, but we worked at GameStop for a couple of years each. And we get free swag all the time. Like companies send us shit like lanyards, pins, shirts. We get free copies of games. Like I got fucking, I went to uh, conference and I got a bunch of free stuff, including a, a free PlayStation Pro. So Yeah, oh, nice. I got <laughs> I got free copies of Crackdown 3. Like I got free stuff. And I remember we got a lot of stuff from Rockstar for Red Dead Redemption 2. And anyone who knows me knows I am the least biggest rockstar person like <laughs> if people ask me what that what i think about like red dead or like gta i will be honest and say that i don't like them and i use the red dead lanyard like i use lanyards for the games that i didn't like but i was honest and people asked me what i thought about them i can understand you can see it tainting pe- people because like oh you took the free stuff you're you're gonna be like you're gonna faking be honest because they gave you like a free shirt or like a free chair but it's like, I feel like if people like Alana Pierce, she's a great example where she came out and she said, yes, I got this chair. Yes, I'm in the game, but I will not be doing anything close to a review of it. I won't be doing this just because I know that it's not like it won't be biased or like it won't be un, un, unbiased because I'm in it because I'm doing this. I, I, think I guess for me, at least it, it. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I think it's just like if you're upfront about it. It can be like, hey, yes, they provided me with this free thing. Like, I'll be the first to say Crackdown 3 is garbage. Like, yes, I have a free copy of it. Yes, I was mm-hmm. given a free copy of it. But Crackdown 3 is garbo. <laughs> like, I'll be the first to say it. Like, I think if, from, if you're honest, then people will understand. I think for me, it's I. It's generally a case-by-case basis. Like, Parrish, like, I've been listening to him for forever now. And it's just like, I know the dude's genuine. And no amount of, like, just free swag, even if it's directly from the company to him, is going to... Uh, is going to sway him to be like, yeah, this game's amazing. Even if, you know, he has like a big serious issue with it. Like he's honest and he'll point bullshit out if he sees bullshit. And he's, he's been on their case about crunch since day one. He's just, you know, he's still excited for it. But uh, yeah, if uh, Raid Shadow Legends wants to sponsor me, I'll, I'll take the money, but I, 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 I'm not going to play it. I'll, 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 I'll say whatever lines you want because this podcast don't pay for itself on podcast services. Blizzard, but, uh, Blizzard, please. I talk, I talk about you every week. I have a tattoo. Blizzard, please. I need, I need that gaming chair, man. But uh, I, I know one particular incident of this that actually still kind of annoys me to this day is. Um, I think we even talked about it a little bit yesterday off um, off stream was the uh, the the um, the infamous Rooster Teeth v Jeff Gersman case of uh, twenty sixteen. I think that's when Fallout. 4 Damn, came that has taken us back. Yeah, um, basically. <laughs> <What happened? laughs> before the before the apocalypse times, before right. the before <laughs> times. Um, 
so Fallout 4 had come out and, you know, it had a lot of issues at launch and, you know, maybe we won't go into like a full review here, but people had issues with the game and uh, Giant Bomb's uh, Jeff Gersman, who had he was pretty infamous in the industry for just saying what the fuck he thinks. He got fired from GameSpot for refusing to uh, give a higher score to a game because the publisher for that game was putting pressure on GameSpot. So they fired him because of it. So I would say he's probably the beacon of integrity throughout the industry. Mm-hmm. And so he gave Fallout 4 like a three out of five because he said, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of technical issues and it's got you know just other game design issues. And on one of Rooster Teeth's podcasts, um, they were kind of just give like just a ra- giving him a round table's worth of shit, saying like, "Oh, he only gave it a three out of five because he wants attention for his website. He thinks like he's a wine and cheese connoisseur speaking down to the lowly peasants. Like, oh, I gave it a three out of five because I have a high art critique of this game." But they're saying this the entire time while they're decked out in like Fallout merch and like Pit Boys and collectors' items. Uh, that were provided to them directly from Bethesda, the company behind Fallout. And uh, at the time, they were also getting, you know, paid ads by Bethesda and doing sponsored paid video content by Bethesda. So that, that that's one instance where I'm just like, yeah, it's a case by case. So I'm just like, yeah, it's pretty obvious to see where that influence is from. Mm-hmm. But something like Paris, I I have absolute faith in him. Uh, and it's and it's just like it sucks because from what I know of Paris, which is not as much as you obviously, but I've just now started watching his content. He seems like the sweetest human on earth, and for he knows how to barbecue really good, apparently too. And for, <laughs> and for Jason Schreier to just like pettily like screenshot his tweets and then call call him out for accepting what looks like a very nice chair, like it's just like it's so petty to me. And it's mm-hmm. so gross. It just like ah, it's just unnecessary thing, Twitter bullshit. Me. It's fucking like the whole thing. I was just like, it's too early for this. Hmm. Uh, Sarah, or I don't know if Corey was awake at the point, but there was a nice big uh, GameStop glitch, I believe. <laughs> oh, I saw that I, Wednesday I, yeah. night. Where yeah, just, I saw that. There's a giant portion of their games and accessories <laughs> that just showed up as zero dollars. It's free, so you know everyone's trying to rush on over there, try to grab shit. I know I had like thirty things in my cart that I was only paying like four bucks for shipping and handling, but I actually did get the confirmation emails that that like, hey, you got charged this amount. They're going to be sending. So it was like, you know, a good $600 worth of savings, but it did get canceled. Too many people got greedy. I think I admittedly got greedy. I should have just stuck with the one thing. <laughs> <laughs> I but. I knew that wasn't going to go good. I saw it popping up on Twitter and I was like, y'all are stupid. <laughs> I, was like, I, 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 <laughs> I, I knew it was stupid, but it oh was my worth gosh. a shot. Just the picture of the guy with um, the cart worth over seven hundred dollars i was just like oh he got oh, stuck no. with a too like he could yeah. cancel his order oh no he couldn't no he got stuck with <laughs> <laughs> Oof. It's Oof. Bad. what but uh, I, I don't i don't care about ripping off gamestop fuck gamestop hey gamestop if you want to if you want sponsored content hit me up but fuck game, but fuck gamestop <laughs> Uh, that so I don't appreciate that because I still have friends who work there. And are, oh no, the employees are fine. I, I've j- never had a bad experience with an employee, but just like the corporate structure and the way they do business, I'm I'm, I'm not cool with. Right, exactly. Okay. I'm uh, like, watch your watch your mouth. You are talking to two X GameStop employee. <laughs> I, I mean, figure that you of, guys would have more vitriol than I. I I I I have to say that I. I, I'm I you know I I still care about the people that work there, but at the same time, um, it's a sinking ship that they need to jump out of, in my opinion. I mean, I don't like the only reason I left the company was because I wasn't getting hours. Like I bur- I literally burned no bridges. Right. Like I was I was basically told like, hey, if you want like seasonal work, we will take you back in an instant. <laughs> like I was like given like. 100 percent like you can you can come back if 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 you want and if we have space so i didn't burn any bridges i was i was still told things that i may or may not wasn't supposed to be told so yeah. for what it's worth secret uh gamestop sleuth it was only i that said the words 
not my two co-hosts <laughs> <laughs> but uh, i'll still take a, take a gaming chair thanks uh ghost of tsushima is getting some new modes um we're already kind of got some new modes. Free, yes this this is old news this is why we're playing catch up <laughs> um so i already loved the base game as it was and it's already such a fucking long ass game i'm not sure if i'm even going to go back to it but it looks pretty damn cool so they have kind of a standard new game plus if you want to go through the early stages of the game you know just like completely overpowered or maybe if you just want to jack the difficulty up and play a harder game overall uh, while still having it be a little bit more of, a, of an even playing field uh, but it also has a full-on new mo- uh, co-op mode called legends with a couple different classes um, are you guys going to check it out whatsoever or did you play the base game uh, i never i never really it's got not, it stream, it's my damn yeah it wasn't my cup of tea it's yeah, assassin's it creed this is fan. my cup of tea but that wasn't my cup of tea <laughs> yeah same this is mine <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I would highly recommend you guys play. Like, yeah, it's a very yeah. good one of those games in terms of you know Assassin's Creed open world type games. It has it's not quite as refined as like Sekiro's Combat, but it is a very solid one of those games. And I would recommend it. But I'm I'm just so burnt out after after platinum platinuming it that uh, I don't think I have any interest in going back to the co op mode. Oh, you platinumed a bit, huh? Yeah, it was, it was actually pretty easy. <laughs> I'm a right. platinum boy yeah uh some <laughs> good news not twitter drama news or anything like that i think we wait do we have any more twitter drama news not that i know no, of but no not that i'm aware of now i don't <laughs> we if we could go a week without any twitter drama that would be fantastic i think the world would be a better place without twitter drama every week yeah don't you mean the world would be a better place without twitter <laughs> That, this is true. This is absolutely as, true. as we are on Twitter every day. Yeah. I've been on it way too much lately. Even Corey's like, damn, dude, you're posting like 20 yeah. plus times a day. It's In not- my defense, I want people to be with me as I replay through Dragon Age. It's, it's not my <laughs> fault that there's so many cool videos I want to share from Yakuza, Corey. Oh like, my gosh. Like witnessing my horse climb up a mountain Skyrim style. Yeah. Anime Which baseball. I have been able to do, but I did anyway. Anime Calvin. baseball is the best kind of baseball, Corey. I'm I saw that. Know. I saw that gif and I laughed. I was like, "Wow, that's ridiculous." It's so good. Uh, uh, and, and some good Twitter news: uh, Sony has given out a free Black Lives Matter theme for uh, the PS4, which <laughs> uh, I think it's just unilaterally. It's it's just a good fucking move. Like, yeah, fuck yeah. Thanks for promoting it and giving it out for free. And I don't even by, care. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. By the way, don't read the comments. Oh, just yeah. In, just oh. in general, do not and read the comments. It, the also, comments were useful in the in the sense that it got all the fucking shit maggots from Twitter all in one place. So I'm just like, oh, cool. Here's a giant list of people I should block. So I spent like five minutes just blocking everyone that had a shitty comment. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I'm improving my Twitter experience. <laughs> so I really think that we should point out while while this is really great and Sony was super awesome for for doing this. Uh, PlayStation Vibes recently got delivered to journalists and influencers. And the lack of female, uh, the lack of women of color who did not get PlayStation fives is incredibly lacking. And oh, I think yeah, the I think the Black Lives Matter uh, background is great. I think it's a step forward in the right direction. But giving those PlayStation fives to women influencers of, of of color would have been a lot bigger of a yeah. Don't just talk the talk, walk the walk. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I absolutely agree with so, that. So, just and, to uh, want to add on to that, even though I think it's great, I think they should obviously be doing more. Mm-hmm. I would even say that maybe those are like different departments, but like at the end of the day, like yeah, they should be sending that to more women of color. Like, there's there's no mm-hmm. disputing that. I did I did see randomly in my feed uh, there there was a a um, streamer who was a woman of color, and she was basically signaling to to Sony or to PlayStation, like, hey. Uh, since you have a lack of women of color, um, you know, influencers or streamers that you're giving, you know, free PlayStations to, it's like I would, vol- I would gladly volunteer myself. Zombie, correct? Huh? Zombie, Z- zombie kills, right? 
Possibly. Yeah, I, I, I literally just, it I, I read it and I was scrolling and I came up, I came upon it and then I just kept going. But, um, we should hit her yeah. up, try to get her on the show. Mm-hmm. Please. She's held, yeah. She was on a that, stream recently with, um, a bunch of women in the games industry, just playing among us. And it was fucking hilarious. That'd be awesome. I'd be down. And, uh, j- just one other note I want to put for this story is, um, I, I don't give a flying fuck about the people saying like, oh, it's just a corporation like jumping on the bandwagon and it, that can absolutely be true. Like, let's say a fucking Chick-fil-A came out and said like, yeah, we're pro LGBT. Meanwhile, you know, they have like a shitty past. It's just like, it's obvious what they're doing. But in, in the case right here with Sony with Black Lives Matter, it's just like, I don't care if it's like a corporate like PR move because at the end of the day, it still gets the message out there. It fucking normalizes it. And I think that's yeah pretty fucking powerful in of itself and uh i mean also <laughs> like how many businesses when when uh you know 2000 2015 rolled around and and uh gay marriage was legalized nationwide how many companies were throwing up rainbow uh colored logos and rainbow flags everywhere to uh you know to embrace the gay community or the lgbt mm-hmm. community um to get more to get uh, you know obviously in a business move to get more of a customer base but still just like you said i agree they made they may be doing it mostly for money but at the same time it normalizes it into our society absolutely yep uh going back to some gamestop news um if gamestop if you want to sponsor me go for it that that's oh, i think that's just God. the recurring theme <laughs> um this is actually a really big surprising bit of news it's that um gamestop will be getting residuals on xbox consoles that they sales uh so they'll be getting residuals from digital copies so isn't that because microsoft bought gamestop no, no so, so, so what came out GameStop. here Oh. In, a, in a press release that GameStop issued uh, last week, they announced a, quote, multi-year strategic partnership with Microsoft that includes using Microsoft's infrastructure technology for back-end processes, as well as hardware, including Surface tablets. So there's a lot of back-end stuff. They have some deals going on there. That's a pretty big cash flow for Microsoft. And uh, Eric Cerny, I have no idea if he's related to uh, our boy Mark Cerny. Um, a GameStop investor relations representative also stated that they will, re- quote, receive a portion of the downstream revenue from any device we... What the fuck? I, I copy-pasted that. That art, that sentence is not formatted <laughs> correctly. <laughs> but it's basically what we said earlier. They're receiving a portion of the revenue from digital sales on Xbox consoles, which, right. you know, at, at face value, it doesn't make sense because, like, everyone, everyone was... was um, was saying like oh with the rise of digital media brick and mortar stores like gamestop they're they're not going to be making money they're going to go away and become obsolete so i think microsoft like e- even with this other deal going on with with back-end software and hardware it, they're like s- really throwing a bone out to gamestop here that, that that just completely surprises me yeah i mean like i said earlier i i before this happened i think that gamestop was um as a as a company they were doing a lot of very shady things and and that um just really signals uh the 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 visual of a of a company that's circling the drain so to speak Mm -hmm. um and uh the fact that xbox is partnering up with them just kind of shows that uh they're in desperate need of of survival funds at this point um and they're tr- they're they're just trying to make it past uh, the new the next gen console releases. So hopefully that'll give them like another booster. But uh, I'm I'm not too confident that they'll that they'll be around in the next like two maybe even three years. I I know we'll never see like the actual hard numbers for this, but I am so fucking curious to see how much that that deal outweighs the digital revenue. Uh, Sharing, sharing that revenue with GameStop works. I'd like to see too. I want to. I want to see the numbers because they. I don't know. I just. I feel like they're gonna lose a lot. They're gonna lose a lot more than they think. Hmm. And uh, j- one other thing actually got me curious is that will this move incentivize GameStop to actively push Xbox sales over PlayStation? Like, if some kid comes and saying, "I want to play Uncharted," will the GameStop? Uh, Store advisor be like, nah, get an Xbox, kid. Will they? Will they do? I mean, whether, knowing, whether, 
knowing the pushing culture that that GameStop uh, enforces on its workers. Um, Which, uh, just a heads up, I never did. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I still was like the highest seller and everyone's like what are what are you doing and i'm like i'm not doing what they're telling us to do <laughs> it's like their policies are ass backwards <laughs> i'm a genuine human being and i treat people like a genuine human being <laughs> the, go figure the only time i would put on that GameStop face is, is when like higher upper management was there right i wanted to sell things like of course within like not like giving shit away for free but like just well, being just being myself and, like, and also also my problem with that is it, my problem with the whole like you know the whole GameStop face thing or whatever it's like uh, they assume that if you're not making sales it's clearly your your fault it's it is it is your fault you're not doing your job which isn't always the case because it really mm -hmm. depends on a store by store basis. And also yeah. it depends on the customer base because you may get a store that literally all, the only customer base you have are people who buy like digital currency or something mm -hmm. like that. Like it just, it, it irked me to no end that they cannot fathom in their tiny corporate brains that, you know, nuance exists in business, you mm -hmm. know? It it's just, just a stubbornness uh, to adapt to the new world and they're just refusing to uh to let go of what worked before because it doesn't work anymore now yeah exactly let's see uh democratic congresswoman alexandria i, I want to make sure i'm pronouncing this right ocasio 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 cortez o ocasio cortez mm -hmm. otherwise mm -hmm. abbreviated as aoc uh took to twitch this week to stream among us with other well-known streamers including pokimane hassan anabi and myth as well as fellow democratic representative ilhan omar um mm -hmm. and oh, well, I as, love as, it. As, a, as a side note yeah, ilhan omar has a fucking <laughs> beast of a machine apparently with a i7 10 700k and dude, a 20, yeah, 2060 super it's like damn i wasn't dude, expecting yeah, that they're they're gamers like, yeah, I, like I, don't, I don't think i didn't even know this but aoc has been playing league of legends for years yeah like, <laughs> and she and, and like didn't she just hit platinum or something and she was and 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 she was like bragging about it on twitter obviously i didn't even and know people, like that. didn't believe her and she's like no guys i play like didn't she joke and say that she played in her office in her like off time or something i think so yeah like I, like she's like oh in my free time i just play i play on my laptop in my office i think people are surprised by like uh even like sports stars or like uh touring musicians just like they have a lot of downtime and that's usually what they go to well and also we forget we keep forgetting that aoc's like she's in our age range she's 30 years old like mm. she she plays games like she's she's a millennial so she's it's got, like she's got zero <laughs> boomer energy exactly and, so. like she was like just like having a blast playing among us it was it was like like the, again my favorite part was when uh was when corpse called her out and she was like what why me i didn't kill anybody it's not me and then he goes well how's your day and she goes oh my day's great i'm having a blast like it's just like <laughs> it was like the best thing ever like I, I didn't get to watch the whole thing but i saw the like highlights of it and no, like, what she, am I... also, she also greatly worked in like 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 legis legislation she stuff did and, like, yeah she, she, she was very smooth people to get out and vote yeah She's like, oh, and then there was this one part. She's like, hey, so and so and so and so. Like, I can't remember their names, but it's like, hey, you two, um, why did you guys, why did you guys uh, vote early? And then she looked at the camera and did like this little thing. And yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I know. And I think one of my favorite parts was honestly when um, she uh, she she was like, this is this is a little strange. Why is a why is a futuristic space station using gasoline still? <laughs> like why? <laughs> and we'll wait. And then and then didn't she specifically say I play games because because I like the lore of them? Like she said something along those lines. Yeah. Something. And she's like, why is it running on gasoline? Like she's pointing out the good parts. <laughs> she's like, pointing yeah. out the important stuff. Yeah. And she's was, good. She's good. Yeah. It was crazy. She uh she got over half a million followers. I think from basically just this alone, and the that stream itself got four point five million views. Yeah, and, and it's amazing. Just, I think what Corey was even touching on earlier. It's just refreshing to see politicians just act like normal people without like this huge giant pretense. Like yeah, she was talking about getting people out to vote because it's fucking important. But she's just mm -hmm. being a person. It's not like um 
It's not like uh, some old decrepit old, old white dude politician coming out saying like, yeah, I like the Pokemans. I, I go and I walk on my phone. Pokemon, yeah, go to the it. polls. <laughs> oh god i know uh, Il- i remember Il- that ilhan's daughter play for a, for a, for, a, for a while and like kicked butt oh i did not know that yeah like i'm pretty sure ilhan's daughter played for like for like a little bit and kicked butt it was like really good at it oh nice so i mean hey man more power to them like and it was it was honestly funny seeing everybody get so butt hurt about it I, I, I do want to address uh, some of the stuff that I was seeing on Twitter revolving around AOC playing playing on Twitch. Um, and, and that's how uh, a, a bunch of people were saying, oh, like, guys, stop simping for a politician. Like, like you shouldn't have blind following for a politician whatsoever. Like, they're a fallible, you know, human being that makes mistakes. And it, and it was like, and people were making, making a really good argument and saying that there's a difference between, you know, simping for a genuinely decent human being who's a politician and somebody who's like a trash fire. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like, uh, there's going to be an extreme example. Like if Donald Trump was like the biggest hardcore capital G gamer, I wouldn't give a flying fuck. Cause he's a piece of shit. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So there's a, there is a difference. Of course you should never, you should, I, I don't think you should simp for a politician. Um, just because people, can, you know, being a politician, and everything, they are very much open to making mistakes and mistakes mm-hmm. do happen as they are human. Um, and, and, you know they work in our government so it's just like i don't know it's like a weird dynamic that i don't think also for me just the same like simping for like a real life person just who it doesn't sit well with yeah with yeah me. like I, I, simping for like a character that an actor plays is different than simping because it's a fictional actor. character right yeah that's and different simp for like a real life person just it doesn't sit well with yeah it's it's fine to have a username of uh chris redfield sweet ass it's not okay to have uh it's it's not okay to have a username like uh like Corey sweet ass (laughs) excuse me no, no, I mean, no, I'm you saying, are, you I'm are, saying you're, you're gone, though. I'm saying you're okay. It's not my fault. I'm dummy thick. <laughs> I, excuse me. I'm the one that crushed my phone with my fucking thick ass. <laughs> but are either of you dummy <laughs> thick that the uh, clap of your ass cheeks is stopping you from sneaking into somewhere? Apparently. <laughs> Most likely. I would alert all the zombies. <laughs> the clap of your ass cheeks. <laughs> Jesus Christ. (laughs) You know, I I think I need to do a slightly better job with pacing out the tone of these stories because we're going back into the territory. (laughs) Not terrible, though. Uh, the poop there was a yeah. there was a rooster teeth slash funhouse. Oh, geez, that's a fucking that's a fucking uh, down a way. Yeah. We can just go we can just go back to talking about thick asses if you want. I'm down for that. Here, let me <laughs> show you my list of my top ten Barra characters. Oh for two of time. We will be here forever. They are they are the categorized they are categorized by thickness and hairiness. In, exactly. in, in an ideal world there would there would have never been this drama and we could just do that instead, but I can have my own episode of this podcast. This is possible. Roll the paper and all the men on it. Just like, all right, guys, we're going to start with uh, meeting, starting with the letter A. This portion of the podcast will be on OnlyFans. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) No, please. We'd be making money for sure. Okay, before before we turn super dark, I'm not going to say who, but a fan did tell me to make a Patreon once. And I go, why? And uh, I'm like, I don't do anything special. And he went, but you're just you. And I'm like, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Giving me money just to be me is kind of weird, man. Mm-hmm. I can set up a Patreon as like a little tip jar, I guess. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, no, man. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird. I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. But no, not saying anything bad to people who have only, only fans. You guys rock yourself. Like, go. I am all here for it. Yeah, I we're just, sex positive here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's just like, again, not, not my thing. Kind of weird when someone just better, tells you, can, make a Patreon for just you. 
<laughs> it's better like, to own your material versus just getting a flat fee. There, there, I'm just saying there's interesting documentaries and former <laughs> porn stars that have come out and explain the economics of it. It's just like, oh, wow, OnlyFans is actually probably the best alternative to the existing model. Anyway, we, we've, we've staved off the inevitable. <laughs> no. It's kind of like, eh. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Really sad. Uh, Ryan Haywood <laughs> and Adam Kovac were caught up in uh, uh, sexual scandals and have since, uh, air quote, left uh, Rooster Teeth. No, um, they've both been uh, terminated. Yeah, hence the air quote. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they, it's basically like, yeah, get the fuck out. It's like, you, you can't fire me. I quit. Um <laughs> literally yeah. <laughs> everyone knows what happened um I, I admittedly don't know too much about the adam kovac stuff because people are still investigating I, by the time i, I know this. uh i know some yeah. stuff about it because my oh, my what's it called my roommate tim was excuse me my roommate tim was very much uh into funhouse and uh yeah, apparently I know. I know as much as everybody else does. So yeah, if if you guys want to do the Adam stuff, I can talk about the Ryan stuff. Oh yeah. So apparently Adam Kovic is uh, a real asshole in person. Mm -hmm. Um, Rahul Kohli does not like him. And um, so basically Adam, I guess the whole scandal uh, to catch mm-hmm. everybody up is like basically with Adam Kovic, uh, he, there was a whole Google um, drive folder with a bunch of um Left nudes. nudes yes full <laughs> nudes and videos of him mostly himself but like one or two of him and his wife together and some of them he was actually doing sexual acts in in like the office space of funhouse um never okay please and still not sure know. if those videos were made with his wife's consent either right yeah, and we, also we don't know and his wife hasn't said anything i mean obviously but right and also the fact that i mean there are allegations against him that he sent these videos to underage girls so so i don't know if you heard this but i heard of course but i don't want to do the whole he said she said thing but when i read about the story supposedly someone had catfished him right exactly um, yeah I people did get, yeah people then, catfished him and then the nude showed up on a gay workout porn site or something, which I mean, hey, if that's your thing, go ahead. But like, yeah. that's supposedly where they showed up at. And then someone linked to that, like linked it openly. And that's how people found them. Mm-hmm. That's just what I heard when this whole thing started. I don't know if that was proven true or false or, or not, but that person who had catfished him then posted those onto that site. Mm-hmm. And then it reached the open net. Open air sounds weird. It reached the open internet. It went into the ether, basically. Yeah, yeah. It, basically it joined the digital uh, world. Basically, so for those who don't know, supposedly how both Ryan and Adam's things happened was there was a fan on 4chan who claimed that they hated Rooster Teeth's liberal biases and that they fired a voice actor named Vic Man- Manana who has sexual allegations. Ale- allegations against him uh Richard Teeth fired him from ruby and this fan supposedly leaked these as a way to get back at them and say and say basically fuck your liberal biases this is what's going on and mm-hmm. ryan's stuff obviously blew up way more than adam's did Mm-hmm. Uh, again, I don't know if anything else has come out about Adam. I think I think it was just infinitely more substantiated, and he he basically outright came out and admitted it. Um, I, I guess just to put the the groundwork down there, so everyone's on the same page. Um, Ryan Hayward abused his position of power over fans in order to get like sexual acts or favors out of them, whether it's nudes or meeting up to do shit, mm-hmm. and. It's never okay to abuse your position over fans. That's a crazy fucking power dynamic. Mm-hmm. And um, some of them were allegedly minors. And that that just makes it even worse. Mm-hmm. But um, Rooster Teeth's whole... Rooster, Rooster Teeth, the company, um, th- their statement to it came out. They said that... Uh, it said our code of conduct is meant for everyone in our community to follow. And that includes our staff and anyone who works or partners with Rooster Teeth. We've parted ways with two employees whose conduct did not reflect the values we strive to uphold in our code of conduct. And to me, that kind of just comes out as like the most milk toast 
PR way of saying mm-hmm. like people did bad thing, but we won't say what the bad thing is. So we, we don't, we're not working with them anymore. When yeah. it, when it's just like this, this issue is like I so mean, fucking pervasive in Hollywood in the media world. It's just like, you should use your fucking platform and be like, Hey, people who abuse their power over fans, fuck off. Fuck you. I go totally, fuck yourself. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm not defending them. I'm looking at things in the middle I, from the time that that statement was posted. Not oh, I, just, I just want to say real quick, like, obviously, there's a lot of legality things. You don't want to come out and, like, say, f- right. you don't yeah. want a company to come out and say, like, fuck this person in particular and because also, they can sue for def- for defamation and whatnot. Mm-hmm. At the time when that, uh, when that, like, uh, what's the word? When that response <coughs> came out, all of the allegations were still, we don't know if this really happened. Right. Because at the time, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe any of the victims had come forward yet. There was one that came out very early. I believe was the same day. I do not recall her name, but she did put uh, out a video. Yeah. And like, I don't know if her video came out after Rooster Teeth statement or before. Oh, it was way before Rooster Teeth didn't put anything out. So like two days after. Okay. I think what um, muddies this whole thing is that a lot of this, as you mentioned, came from 4chan and even Kiwi Farms, which yeah. is a notorious doxing so, website. I'm going to be completely honest with you. When this whole thing started, I didn't know whether to believe it because it came from the Kiwi Farms, because it came exactly. from Exactly. That, that is an absolute that valid person, concern. The person who leaked it claiming it was because Rooster Teeth was anti-Trump, that was a huge red flag to me. Mm-hmm. Cause I was like, okay, is this the only reason that you're leaking this really terrible stuff? Like the fact that it came out because of that, for the first couple hours, I didn't really believe it. Because mm-hmm. I was just like, wow, okay, because you're ta- mad at that company is anti Trump, you're suddenly going to leak and somebody's nudes, which again, having your nudes on a fucking Google Drive, like. And they call us snowflakes. Oh, dude, the, the people that like using the term snowflake, they're the biggest fucking snowflakes in the world. <laughs> like, the whole. And, uh-huh, and again, exactly. I mean, I truly really believe it now. I think it's terrible. I'm disappointed. I mean, I was a huge uh, achievement hunter and funhouse fan before all this happened and it just hurts it sucks but yeah at the beginning it wasn't it was so like weirdly this is the best word to describe it but like like wiggly at the beginning because of this of the of the source where it came from Mm -hmm. especially with like adams are like oh he was catfished and then his nudes were posted on like a a gay workout porn site like again i'm not saying that's bad you can be into that that's totally cool who am i to judge but it's just like the way that he had written that, I was like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, did someone really catfish Adam Kovic to get his nudes to put on a porn site? Like, it was like, who was going through this trouble? Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think with what happened to Adam Kovic, like, there were some, there were some, uh, I mean, there are allegations and stuff, but nothing's been proven necessarily. Mm-hmm. And it was more of like an invasion of privacy, uh, mm-hmm. that happened with him. And, um but that I mean, also uh, happened to just have shitty stuff in it yeah it has and it has some other like there's some like breaking of trust and everything within his own relationship mm-hmm. and all that stuff but but that's like that's all like interpersonal things that yeah that, and but otherwise like it's been said that in real life adam adam kovic is actually just like he's an asshole and like a lot of people didn't ooh, a lot of people who were like guests on funhouse didn't come back because of adam kovic so yeah and and raul was pretty open and saying like he basically said fuck adam kovic like that's why he stopped coming on funhouse was specifically because of him orange uh sontag even he commented something along those lines and then deleted it shortly after Mm -hmm. um so i i I don't know the whole like adam it's so hard to think about the shit that adam's done when like ryan was literally a fucking predator and especially reading back on all the old like Rooster Teeth animated stuff to where they're like, oh, Ryan always weirdly stays in an, an extra night at like every hotel that we stay at. Just, to, oh, just thinking just all about that it. shit in hindsight. Yeah. 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 It freaks me out, dude. Oh, thank you, PM <laughs> Jeff. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, as Corey pointed out, the, uh, the Adam stuff, it, it's still pretty bad it's it's no, but it's not it's, just like it's, it's, it's not as hardcore wrong. confirmed as as all the ryan shit going yeah, on like, right don't get me wrong ever, this shit that adam did was not okay but 
uh, and again, I'm saying this for deep honesty, we literally have heard, again, we don't know if Adam sent them to underage fans, we don't know. The, the like board that Adam's stuff is sitting on is so much more shakier than Ryan's, if that makes sense. Like, I'm not defending him, but like... Oh, absolutely. I've heard nothing else from Adam's stuff, just the stuff with Ryan just keeps piling up. Mm-hmm. And also, if people are more confused after this discussion on it, I can't remember the Reddit commenter's name, but if you Google it, there's a Reddit commenter who is basically updating like so many different comments because 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 he's like hit the text limit where he's updating the entire si- si- situation and commenting whenever someone comes forward with accusations against Ryan. Mm-hmm. If he need, like an easy way to keep up on all this, I feel bad. Don't remember the person's name because I want to give them as much credit as I possibly can because they're they're being very good and diligent and keeping all this stuff down. But if you really want to know, uh, I think it's r slash, um, r slash what really happened or something like that. It's something along those lines. Yeah, if, if you Google uh, it, you'll find it pretty easy. You'll be able to mm-hmm. find it. And it's a great, I say that in like, it's great as in it's an, it, it explains everything, has everything up to date. I think the person's still updating it like daily. It just basically explains everything that's g- going on. But mm-hmm. yeah, the whole situation sucks, and it's definitely hard. I was recently cleaning out uh, clothes and shirts that I had. And I got rid of all my achievement hunter and funhouse stuff because I just I couldn't. I think it's also worth have- noting that. Um, <clears throat> so even though I I'm not a huge fan of Rooster Teeth the company's statements and um, the individual employees didn't really come out immediately and say anything. And I would imagine, you know, that's, that's typical to be expected. So it happens in a company, they say, okay, just, just wait until we get all the details of this settled out. Then you can say whatever yeah, you want. I can't, and like, I can't blame any of them for not coming out right away because yeah. it's probably like a legal thing. Mm-hmm. And, and so them, they, it would hit a lot harder than like a big it, company. So yeah. And it, and it hit those individual employees so fucking hard. I know I was watching us, um, I don't know if it was a stream or, or a V or a VOD, but uh Jack and uh Michael from oh, Human Hunter, they they were in tears. It was so fucking hard. They're like we were sitting next to this monster this whole time and we had no fucking clue. Like that betrayed was our so trust. Hard to watch. Like, oh God. Poor Jack. It, but I I I remember I was talking to a friend about it and she's like, Oh, I don't know what if they all knew and I, and, and after watching that, I'm like, dude, they didn't know. Mm-hmm. like and um just watching how sincere and just like 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 jose said they were legitimately in 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 tears multiple times throughout that mm-hmm. video like and uh shout out to rooster teeth for um i think they mentioned in that same stream that uh, the achievement hunter guys at the very least uh they were given the week off and they were also provided with counseling in order to help <laughs> um to help cope with the entire situation so kudos for that Mm-hmm. But um, I think just the last takeaway I want to do with this, at least for me and you guys can add whatever you want also, is uh, there's Re- Rooster Teeth has been around for, I think, what, 2000, since 2004. So they have like a gigantic fan base, which a giant portion of that nowadays is a lot of impressionable kids. And there's a lot of impressionable <laughs> fans out there. They're, they're not taking the situation well in regards that they're defending it. And it's like, that's where you have to, as a company... You don't even have to name specific people, but just as a statement, just like, hey, any past, present or future employees at anywhere, do not do this shit. This shit is fucked up. Fuck anyone that does this. Mm-hmm. And I think like everyone in it is just such a low bar to say that. I think the entire industry needs to get behind that. Mm hmm. Because I mean, it is. Cause, and and I I I would say that they would defend themselves and say, well, it's in our it's in our contract, it's in our rules of conduct, and everything like that. And it's like, okay, but that's like you sign a paper of employment and and you move on, and then you know these people can do whatever they want until they get caught, and in which case, obviously, fire their ass. But it's like you're not making a public statement about it against Mm -hmm. this issue. You're not bringing it to the light. You know, it needs to be brought more into the light. So that way more people are aware of it and how often it actually happens. So we can battle it and we can fight it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's like also, and you can judge this any way that you want, but this is how I'm taking it. 
the fact that because uh, I know it on that same stream, Jack said we're not we're, we we are never going to mention this again. We are never going to bring it up again. In my honest opinion, you can't like that doesn't set a good precedence. They're no. just basically trying to like sweep it like, under I the rug. It. Yeah. And it's like I get it. It it's so mentally painful for, for them, and I can't understand what they're going through. I can't begin to understand. What I think I think like. that's I think that's what it is. Is they want to keep one. They want to keep the positive energy about it about their yeah. show, but also I think it might be just like too painful for them to talk about. Um, I, I imagine. I think- Oh, sorry. sorry go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I was just going to say, I um, I I think I would I would like slightly disagree with Sarah. Um, I I strongly disagree with, or uh, I would say for as far as like sweeping under the rug, I'm that's what corporate researchers did. But for like the individual employees, as uh, Corey said, I believe like it, it's just so painful to even think about it. I, I don't think they'll necessarily ignore it, just so much as they're not going to bring it up casually in content or whatever. They just well, they also they it. also could be be they also could be told by PR to that's not true. talk about it. Yeah. So that's also another reason. Like corporate does affect how they, mm-hmm. you know, do their show. So it's and Rooster Teeth has gotten very progressively corporate over the years. So mm-hmm. that that's absolutely believable. Well, so to preface why I said that to kind of bring up what you guys were saying er- er- earlier where right right now we need them to come out and say like this shit isn't okay people Absolutely. in power who are not us but like other influencers shouldn't be doing this and i feel like them just saying which i get i get it's really it's really intense for them i feel so bad for that like you don't understand like i like i love jack i love michael i love all of them and it hurts so bad to see them so so hurt but at the yeah. same time i feel like in, in even if it's not now even if it's like a couple months from now even if it's like a year from now having them come out and be like look people with power people of influence should not be doing this this is not okay like just hearing them say that after this whole thing is gonna get so many more people to be like okay maybe we know that they they that that they didn't know now maybe they understand which i'm not saying they don't understand the like severity of what happened i'm definitely not saying that it's so hard to put words what i'm trying to get here it's just I, such no, a yeah, I totally, situation i totally get it and I, I i think it's like it's one of those situations where everyone knows everyone if you're you'd have to be completely brain dead it, to not know what what is going on in that mm-hmm. sense like you the the problem is is that everybody knows what's going on but nobody wants to be like the flagship starter of a movement you know Mm -hmm. um nobody wants to be no company wants to be the one to flagship uh, a, a movement for positive change because on a business standpoint they can always see negative backlash from being a quote unquote social justice warrior or whatever mm-hmm. you want to say it just it's but so eventually something's got to give eventually it's going to happen it may not be right this second mm-hmm. but eventually something's going to break to the point where this is a problem not just in our nation but especially in our nation in america but um it, it it's a problem worldwide oh, and that's what you're i'm sorry you know, go ahead and it, well, I was just going to say, and it needs to, it needs to be brought more awareness to, and it needs to stop. So I think I'm um, going back to the PR thing. I don't want to speak for everyone here, but you know, Rooster Teeth <sighs> is a pretty big fucking deal. Excuse Bless me. you, by the way. Thank you. Excuse um, me. <laughs> Rooster Teeth is a very big fucking deal, even in the games industry, let alone, you know, just the, um, wh- whatever you want to label them as they're, they're a big company in the space. And, um, <clears throat> people that would that would come out and like continue to talk about it maybe not would not be in the most um favorable light with rooster teeth and they, they just have a big influence mm-hmm. i don't want to go too much into it but no i get you I, I i would say people were more hesitant to write about this and you know and granted there's a lot of legality going on with this as sarah mm-hmm. state um uh accurately stated earlier but it, it feels like there's a lot of people outside of the company Rooster Teeth that haven't spoken up about it, and and when, it, when you compare this, when you compare and contrast against other situations to 
to um to other companies it's just like oh wow the response time there was really quick and uh even if they didn't have like the hardcore facts they say allegedly this is what people are claiming Mm -hmm. so this response time is is not the same whatsoever no yeah i think i think more people that work for these companies that that are if they're witnessing any of this behavior whatsoever they need to speak out and they need to they need Mm -hmm. to talk about it and they need to you know they need to put these people in a spotlight because i'm sorry and i'm going to be the first to say it but these are freaking pedophiles guys these Mm -hmm. are pedophiles yeah like these people like (laughs) you should have no qualms saying fuck anyone that does this shit exactly ryan was fucking 40 and he was like sleeping with like 17 year olds yeah like, and even no, and, and even all shivery. Like, and even it. speaking even speaking in a legal term if if they were over 18 still using your platform and your power to coerce someone into a sexual situation mm-hmm. is never okay <laughs> it's never yeah. okay for any situation to utilize your power in in a negative manner yeah i don't give a you fuck know? if it's legal or not it's fucked up it's not it's morally fucking wrong yeah Exactly. And, um, uh, just just one note I want to I want to put out there just so we can move on. And unless anyone else has any has anything else they want to add, is um, they are take uh, achievement hunter at the very least is taking down every single video that has Ryan in it or any men- mention as well as any merchandise. Oh good. And uh, yeah. the Roos- the parent company Rooster Teeth has been more than accommodating with that. So kudos mm-hmm. to them on that front. Well, yeah, he's. Uh, his i i don't know what even to say his career's over mm-hmm. he's done you know i don't know what he's going to do for the rest of his life but i don't give a shit yep also uh i'm just going to point out here cuz a lot of people have been pointing it out but it's kind of been drummed out please don't attack his family please don't attack his wife yeah oh yeah they're the fucking victims his, his mm-hmm. kids are like toddlers like just please don't like i get everything that he's done is shitty and bad but they're also victims in this Mm -hmm. and i've been seeing too many people online doxing him doxing his family doxing his wife like don't do that like Mm -hmm. don't there's nothing that's ever going to justify doing that when they have nothing to do with this Mm -hmm. yeah you you should never dox in the first place but you should especially never dox the fucking victim Mm -hmm. yeah don't don't dox just uh don't dox his family don't dox his wife don't his kids are fucking toddlers guys just don't do it mm-hmm. like it's not good it's not smart it's absolutely dumb like i get it everything that he's done was terrible and he's a pedophile and it's disgusting but his family had nothing to do with it they're also victims just please mm-hmm. just, and i hate that that's been getting drowned out like the people coming forward saying like don't do this is getting drowned out and that's terrible mm-hmm. to me like that's not okay like just don't be that person please right like mm-hmm. be be the better person attack him don't attack his family those are completely <laughs> different things like well to get us out of this uh bummer uh <laughs> let, let's let's go to a bit of a funny story i don't think it's gonna be quite as funny and wholesome as uh, thick asses uh, but <laughs> i don't think there's anything as wholesome as thick asses wasted <laughs> <laughs> Uh, MSI has caught themselves in a little bit of a uh, funny situation where, um, uh, sir, I'm not sure if you know, this is actually something I would have loved to have um, Mesa on. Yeah, I don't uh, do PC stuff. I just know that laptop good can. can, can <laughs> laptop can good. Out it's months. okay. I'll talk to you about PC stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so, gonna as, uh, dip out for a hot second. <laughs> uh, for people that don't know, the um, RTX 3080 is the the, the 3000 series is the newest line of uh, video cards by NVIDIA. Um, these cards are actually made by <laughs> other manufacturing companies such as uh, EVGA, MSI, and mm-hmm. whatnot. And uh, they, much like the next-gen consoles, have sold out on pre-orders, whether it's people wanting to buy them or just an army of bots. And so you find people scalping them and putting them for inflated prices on eBay and whatnot. Because they're shitbirds is what they are. The uh, 3080 <laughs> is, is kind of like the... It's kind of the sweet spot that people are aiming for in terms of power to dollar value. Mm-hmm. And that's at $800. And so what's happened now is... Um, there is a company on eBay called Starlet Partners uh, that's selling uh, scalped uh, 3080 cards by MSI. 
the the funny part of the story is that MSI owns Starlet Partners. And so when you go to the address and contact info for Starlet Partners, it's the exact same address as MSI. No. They are literally in the same fucking building. So it's like, MSI, are you scalping your own fucking cards and gouging your own customers? That is, that is messed up. Oh, it, my God. <laughs> and uh, Mason knew a bit more about this, and he, he can do some corrections later. That- he said, like... There, there's a bit of a disconnect. I guess like there's only like a couple people working that department and they didn't know there's some confusion. So w- whether or not it's m- complete malicious intent or a legitimate mistake by someone who didn't know, it is fucking hilarious. And it's so fishy. It's like that, that is not a good PR that just, look. That sounds like something an American company would do. Let's just be honest. <laughs> Yeah, or like, a company in general just a corporation like like fuck it people are scalping our shit why can't we <laughs> that's not illegal right that's not that's totally legal to do like it just it's very underhanded is what it is well on the plus <laughs> side uh sarah won't have to worry about this because laptop good play well yay Input. <laughs> Dude. okay so for those who don't know i've i had a really bad laptop problems like my old i i run on razor gear like literally everything around me is razor here um and my old razor laptop almost set my apartment building on fire because oh yeah that's right the cpu melted so i got this new one completely free like it's a 2.5k that like 2.5k dollar laptop for free and how the I fuck do you manage that out, uh fighting for six months i was six months without a computer no but how'd you get it for free uh because i fought enough and threatened to sue Oh, because your old one. Oh, uh, yeah. Because well, there, right was a, there was uh, so my so there was a thing where the where the fans in my old laptop could stop working, and this is pretty topical. It stopped working when I was trying to run Hades, like early access version of Hades. Oh wow, that's and the fan stopped, and so my I guess it's CPU, suiting in that regard. So my CPU started melting and almost set the apartment building on fire. And Razor was like, hey, we could send you the same model, but we'll slap a new fan on it. And I was like, no. <laughs> no, we will not. It's like, I don't trust that model anymore. Fuck that. And so I fought for six months to the thing. Thank God I was graduated and out of school and not needing a laptop. But I was out of commission for six months. Uh, I had to fight with Razor customer service every week until finally I got so fed up. And I said, if you guys don't send me your brand new model that came out like two days ago at the time of talking to them, I'm like, I will sue. I'm like, I have the money to get a, a, a lawyer and I will sue the fuck out of you guys. And finally, the person was like, okay, you want this model, right? And I was like, yes. And I want it in the <laughs> initial racial white too. And he's like, and he's like, oh, I'll see what I can do. And I'm like, no, you will get it for me. And they got it overnighted from i oh, think nice. like, wow nice yeah, that's like, fuck y'all if i that's tell you to threaten uh, to sue someone i'm bringing you that's how you that's how you demand your rights right there <laughs> that's how you demand a room and, uh, <laughs> i got this laptop and it's vr ready if i choose to do that and the first time i ran wow at 140 fps i was flying through b- b- Borales, and I go. It snows in Borales, and my friend's like, "Yes." I'm like, "Really? You didn't have the snow on before?" <laughs> really, 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 really fast, really yeah. quick. I just want to. I just want to bring one question up to you, Sarah. Yes. Um, I have been. I have been hovering my mouse over the install button of World of Warcraft <gasps> for the it's- past like week because i used to be into it i i got into it as a kid it is the best time vanilla i played vanilla and then i and then i got back into it around god when was it i don't even remember it it had to have been 2012 is when i kind of got back into it a little bit and then i and then i jumped out of it and and now i'm like do i want to get back into wow like because i don't really I don't really have like an MMORPG that I play. I did start playing. Um, what's that newest one that came out? That's sort of like Zelda. Um, Genshin Impact. Genshin, yeah, Genshin Impact. But uh, it's okay. Like I don't know. But like 
WoW has a sweet spot for me because it's so familiar and I'm so familiar okay. with with like the lore and the world and like the interface. Okay. And any other any other MMORPG just like felt lackluster to me. In it, is the, it is the best time for you to jump in, okay. Corey. I, I will so, level up with you, dude. So really, you will? <laughs> Hell yeah! If you, if you will give me uh, for, the floor. For as like, long as we're playing, okay, board. okay. We'll give Sarah the floor. Give Sarah. The if floor. You're gonna force. So, uh, shameless plug. I recently wrote a blog post about this, but Corey, now is the absolute best time to jump into WoW, and there are two reasons for this. One is the new leveling system. So, uh. If you play a class that's not a allied race, which is something that's new, I will explain to you later what an allied race is. Um, uh, you start off at a new area called Exile's Reach, which is the brand new leveling zone for 1 through 10. It has its own contained story to it. It teaches you how to play your class. It teaches you how to play the main like subclass. So say if you're a hunter, it teaches you how to play a Beastmaster hunter. Um, and... It even lets you do a tutorial dungeon right at the end. So it teaches you how to do dungeons, it teaches you how to uh, queue, queue up, it teaches you how to run the area. Once you hit level 10 and you go to Stormwind to continue leveling up, if you have bought the base game, so the 1999 game, and you're paying the monthly fee and everything, you can play every expansion up to the newest one completely free. So what that means is you can also now level at your own pace. Again, what that means is you don't have to go the way the game forces you to go before. So before, you had to play every expansion in order to level up and get your character to max. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. Now you can pick any expansion you want to start from. So say you want to start with Legion, because that was the newest one. And you're like, oh, I want to level up in, in Legion first. Every enemy will scale to your level. I mean, you can be level 14 leveling in Legion, when before Legion was a level 100 area. If you want to start with Battle for Azeroth, which is the technically the newest one before Shadowlands, you 100% can, and that was a level 110 area before. Mm -hmm. So you can literally, you can pick from your favorite expansion to your least favorite. You can start off with your least favorite and go to your favorite. You can start off in the middle. You can literally level up however you want to. It is the most freedom that WoW has given people ever. Yeah, and I will say that my 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 graphical, as far as like graphics go and everything, my experience with WoW is like a decade old. So oh, it's gonna um, be a nice bump. Amazing. So I'm gonna see like a major difference, right? Like in graphics. Yes. Okay. So both in <laughs> graphics and in character customization as well. With the recent pre pre patch for Shadowlands that just got released, there's over 100 new customization options. I have a proposition uh, for the both of you. What? And and I want to include Mesa in this as well. He probably doesn't have the damn time for it, but I'll still propose it to him. Uh, let's start some new characters together. Hell yeah. If, if Sarah's down, then I'm down. I'm down. Okay, yeah. okay uh, but but we have to make this decision right here now. Alliance or Horde? Alliance. I, 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 no, no, no. Uh, I want Corey to choose. <laughs> he, is, he is the pure boy. I, I, usually, I usually bounced between the two because I've... Okay, so here's my history with WoW. I have played... Um, I have played human before, uh, but I've also played undead. Um, <laughs> that's amazing. Don't drop it. <laughs> um, I have also played, I think, you know what? It's funny. I think my very first character I ever made in world of Warcraft was, um, the, the bull characters from the horde, the, uh, Torin. the Torin. Yeah. I think, I, I think that was my very first character I ever made was, was a Torin. Um, but I've also been like a gnome or a dwarf or something. So I don't know. I just kind of, yeah, I kind of hopped around. So I don't know yet. I'm going to have to flip oh, a coin or something. I too am a hopper. My main character is a Alliance Vengeance Demon Hunter. Corey, you don't even know what demon hunters are. Oh, I'm so excited. They hunt <laughs> demons. Speaking so of demon are... hunters. Oh, what? nice segue. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm actually kind of proud of that one. It's kind of a coincidence how it's the next story. Yeah. Okay, Corey, I'm so excited uh, to, to speak to you more after the show. I would love for you to come back in a while. Okay. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, making signals so, off screen. Okay. Um so speaking of demon hunters, uh the D DMC five special edition is uh has come out and listed some of its uh graphical options. 
uh, which includes a 4K 30 FPS mode with ray tracing, uh, 1080p with 60 FPS with no ray tracing, 4K 60 with ray tracing, or, or up to 120 FPS and 1080 with yes, ray tracing off. Yeah, it's a millionaire and have the TV that can do that. They're so fucking right? expensive. It's like 2000 yeah. and up. <laughs> so I'll, I'll be playing in, uh, I'll probably be doing, f- uh, f- I'll, I'll probably do 1080 60 with ray tracing on, but I just yeah. want to say if, like, I have no qualms with 30 FPS on console games whatsoever. 30 FPS kind of has some frame pacing issues on PC unless the game has a native uh, frame limiter option. Uh, but for a game like this, if you choose to play this in 30 FPS, we can't be friends. Nah, dude, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I'm doing 4K 60 frames and ray tracing. That's that's what I'm doing. (laughs) Yeah, I can't. I can't play. And even I think DMC5 ran at 60 FPS on PlayStation 4 Pro, I think. I think. I mean, it looked like 60 to me. It ran perfectly. Mm -hmm. Um, It it was it was 60. Because oh my god, the game is beautiful, and I've been I've been trying to stop myself from like playing through it again because I'm because it's my day one purchase for my PS5, and I've been so tempted not to play through it again because that's the only game I've played through this this gen like five fucking times. So, like, I, I used surpri- to beat it and restart it because I love it so much. I've surprisingly only done it once, and I'm damn satisfied. Uh, I've beaten it all the way up to uh, Dante Must Die. No, I beat Dante Must Die. I'm on Heaven and Hell. But I r- refuse because that's the one where like enemies kill you in a single hit. Oh and I'm lord! <laughs> <laughs> like I just oh, Death My Cry Five is so good, and being be able to run it at like sixty FPS with like ray tracing at ten eighty p, just like who it does it does things to me. <laughs> uh, for what it's <laughs> worth, on the PC version, you can already do uh, higher frame rates. But as we covered, um, I believe it was last time, the special edition is not coming to PC, so you won't be get I. Th- no, I think Virgil might be DLC coming to even the base yeah. game, uh, but, you, but you won't be getting the base game as DLC. Yeah, but either way, you won't be getting the special edition on PC. So, and next gen version like, for the probably best version. Oh, it's going to be the best version. Like that version's getting Virgil right off the bat. And if the rumors are true, and Virgil has his own like full cam campaign with like with like extra bits added to the ending like sign me the fuck up i had to already signed sign me the fuck up again i also had to remind myself um because like yesterday i was kind of inwardly moping on the fact that i have to rebuy devil may cry 5 for the ps5 um for the special edition and then i like looked it up and everything again and i was like i was reassured because it was like uh, it's basically like a completely new game in a sense because it's is it only 40 yeah, I mean, it's only it's only it's like twenty dollars less than it was when it was yeah. first com- came out, so it's fine. But it's like I had to reassure myself of like why it's okay to buy it again. <laughs> it, it comes yeah, it's with it comes. Me. I will just buy it again in general. Like how much? Also, I it's it also it's well, also it's digital only, so it's like no yeah. so physicals coming out. December oh, is it? Oh, is yeah. it? okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. physical copy coming out December third. Which, knowing my dumbass, I will once again buy it physical, even though I don't need it. <laughs> hey, I mean, if you're a collector, then there you go. Well, so I'm definitely getting it day one on PS5. I'll most likely buy it physical on the Xbox just to have it because I cover art. Even though people are saying it looks bad, I think it looks badass. Yeah. Well, so, I would always. I mean, when I when I worked for GameStop, it was like I I had those I had those few customers that would come in and buy a brand new game and then um. And and they would like literally sit there and check the plastic ceiling to make sure it was like yeah. pristine. Mm-hmm. And um, when I when I asked him about it, um, I'd be like, "Oh, do you plan on playing the game? Since I know you collect them, I'm I'm just not sure how this works because I'm I'm like new to collecting. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, are, are you just a collector or are you a gamer too? He's like, Oh no, I buy the digital version so I can play it, and then I buy the physical version so I have like the collecting part of it. I'm like. Well, if you have expendable income, then sure. <laughs> like No, and um I sort of understand that as someone who plays Atomes on the Switch and the Switch are, are getting them physically and di- digitally, which is super nuts. The fact we're getting like these dating sims physical is crazy. But I always go for them physical first because like they they're they're always just released for like a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. And then they're gone. Then you would also have to buy it 
digital. So, I mean, I sort of understand that. But again, it also super weirded me out because I was just like, yeah, it has like a tiny nick at the top, but dude, it's just going to sit on a shelf. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, it's going to sit on a shelf and not do anything. <laughs> but no, um, yeah, uh, back on Devil May Cry 5, I'm just... Because it was, like, the least kept secret in gaming ever. Like, I had a bunch of my friends, not saying who they are, because they're, they're, like, industry people. I had a bunch of industry people friends, like, a leaker friends, be like, Sarah, it's coming, we promise. And I'm like, when the fuck is it coming? <laughs> like, like every, like, gay media event, they're like, Sarah, we promise it's coming. And I'm just like, how often do I need to be told this to know that it's actually happening? <laughs> and it's, it's, like, the fact that it's real and like that Virgil gets his own song and his own song is like 10 minutes long like fucking tool levels of Devil May Cry music like it's just like oh it excites I, me I'm why wondering, would, I'm wondering would, if we're gonna get some new songs in the special edition why well, would you insult Devil May Cry like that what huh? why would you insult Devil May Cry like that wait who Sorry. You said what it sounds like say? tool uh, uh yes yeah, shut the fuck up <laughs> How about you shut the fuck up? I, all I know is a special edition is the best edition because <laughs> it comes with it, it comes with Virgil, but, it, but it, oh, it's fun. But it also comes with Virgil's theme song. I'd just, pay forty dollars for that. I'm just so glad it's actually happening because it's like Devil May Cry Four special edition took fucking ten years. <laughs> it wasn't even that good. <laughs> So I'm so I'm just like more like yes it's actually happening and it's and it's happening only a year after the original release. <laughs> so it's not it's not terrible. We're actually still getting it, so that's what excites me. So all right. um, well I think we're yeah. gonna be wrapping it up pretty soon. We've gone through all the timely stories. We wanna leave we wanna leave some stuff, including uh Steve's meat for next time Jesus. We gotta, we just gotta, don't even say anything else just leave it at that. Ruin the fun and, and nintendo took it out i i just want to i just want to tease steve's meat y'all y'all ruined the fun if you just kept quiet about it <laughs> nintendo would have never taken it out um oh god are That's... we gonna touch on are we gonna touch on real quick before we have to go uh the playstation ui oh uh, we can say that for next time okay okay all right. Any any last words or topics anyone wants to touch upon? Oh, uh, back on the Devil May Cry topic. Never forget the uh, what was most officially known as Dante's Crotch Gate, where people for like a whole fucking two weeks were like inspecting the gameplay footage because they thought that Dante's Crotch had jiggle physics, and 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 Matt Walker, the the producer, had to come out and say that it didn't, and people were mad. <laughs> I mean, but like, why not? People Come were on. It's only fair. Guys it's only fair. It's, I mean, it's. I mean, unless he's wearing like. I feel like guys. I feel like guys in video games should like every once in a while have to like adjust themselves. You know, it's. Re- I feel like that's that's real. Listen, I do that I'm shit like every five saying, minutes. I'm not saying I was that person who made him like step up on a stair and take a and like zoom in on the like photo mode. And point out that this is a that very way. specific example. I yeah, I did this. I have no shares. <laughs> <laughs> I sent it, and I was like, "This man's not wearing undies. Where is the crotch physics?" I'm like, "Where, <laughs> where?" And it, I just remember it was a whole thing for like two weeks. Like Twitter was just like, "Give us answers, Capcom." <laughs> everybody, everybody knows. Everybody knows that you have to free ball it because you get way more, you know, aerodynamic in your fighting and it you're way more flexible without underwear like let's be honest <laughs> I, 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 I can verify this but he's, in, he's in leather pants Corey. But, i mean to, to his credit there's not much in terms of <laughs> physics going on in terms of like you know like how they have this stupid like over the top like booby physics in games there's not really a male equivalent for that i mean you can give them all like juicy yeah, thick asses like like lady like lady definitely has boob physics and like you know all the women of dmc have boob physics but we can't get crotch physics like i mean it would be nice special. it's I mean, called it's, it's called the double standard i fucking i mean if, if they I'm have un- in the witcher 3 <gasps> naked and people pull out girls naked model and he's a ken doll like what the fuck guys if they can have <laughs> unrealistic booby physics there should be gigantic unrealistic dick physics i mean also also i think 
Also, I think that just I'm going to put this out there for body positivity. I don't think that men and women in video games, whether they're the main character or not, should have perfect bodies. I think that they should have a little jiggle. I think they should have a dad bod or, you know, uh, just have love handles or something. You know, give us some realistic body types, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. I want a dad bod Dante now. There you go. Yeah, I (laughs) <laughs> he right. should he should have a dad bod with how much pizza he eats <laughs> that's, that's the true. whole thing it's its own <laughs> it's just, uh, i could talk about devil may cry and the weird shit about it for hours you know all the weird porn gags that he reads when like people are like around yeah no shame no shame do, do you guys remember the um it's a, it's an in-game cheat or unlockable and uncharted's one two and three you can get donut that drink means. and drink fat yeah what it, it's supposed i didn't to, know that actually it, it's supposed to be a dumb joke like oh ha 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 it's it's drake but he's fat but in a weird way it's kind of i mean you have to like stretch for it, but it's like oh wow you, you can play as this guy and no one ever brings it up or anything he's just doing his thing donut drake going around platform and shooting dudes yeah <laughs> donut drake <laughs> it, it's semi wholesome if you stretch enough because obviously it, that's the joke but yeah yeah I've seen bigger guys do parkour on video. It's mm-hmm. it's possible, you know. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> all right, we we missed you, Mesa. We missed you, Mesa. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs> yeah, right, we will see you guys next time. Bye. With a guest potentially. Yeah. Bye bye.